how to communicate with others when there is discomfort, where there is disagreement, where there's a difference in opinion, where there's a sense of holding one position versus another position. How do we express those parts in us which are angry, upset, frustrated, where we feel boundaries may have been crossed, we've been humiliated or shamed, or we're just outraged by someone else's behavior towards us or towards someone else or something else that we cherish and value and love. How to communicate in a way which brings us into effective communication that allows us to find resolution. Well, the first thing is to notice what it is we're frustrated about. What is the content? So the exterior circumstance, situation that is actually occurring that is triggering us into a state of anger or frustration or disappointment, sadness. It's important to identify what has happened, what is going on. And then to identify what is our perception of the situation. So we can be quite descriptive in the first case. You know, when I was driving the car and you swerved in front of me, then I felt you know, upset, scared, uh, frightened, afraid for my life. You know, so the, when you did something is the naming of the actual event as a description, not as an emotion. Like what are the details of what has happened? And on Friday morning at 10 o'clock when you came into the door and your voice was raised, then you move into the second stage of the communication, I felt. So the first stage is detailed description of what happened, what occurred, the actual circumstance, the moment of experience. And then the second stage is ownership of your own feeling, emotional or sensation response. So when you did this, I felt or I sensed or the emotion that rose in me was this. Now the key here is the word I. Yeah. You did this and I felt that. So you're owning your response to what has happened. This is very different to when you did this, you are the cause of all of my upset, you are the cause of all of my pain, uh, which is a projection response, which is blaming the other, which ultimately disempowers us from our own connection with self, with our own internal experience. So this takes a little bit of practice, the describing of what happened when you did this, and then it also takes some practice to start the sentence with, I felt. Now, if you're on the receiving end of this communication, it might be that you are in disagreement with what the other person felt, or you feel it's unjustified, or you feel you didn't do this. But the important thing here is then to look at what you're feeling, what is your I response to what has just been shared about what you did or didn't do. So then the, the communication is one which is based in self-responsibility, self-ownership. If we don't do this, what happens is it becomes a projection game. Something happens, I get triggered, then I blame you as the cause of the trigger, and then put all my frustration and anger on you, and expect you to make the change in order for me to feel safer or better or happier. Now, if I'm in this state of reliance that my happiness and well-being is dependent on you making a change, then I'm giving up my power, my God-given, goddess-given, sovereign presence in the hope and expectation that you may or may not do something that will then shift it for me. So there's a laziness here. We're disempowering ourselves. We're also not taking action to transform the way that we see the event or communicate about the event or to find a common solution which could transform the situation in a more harmonic way. So imagine the difference between two people who've expressed the detail of what happened and then have taken I ownership for feelings, emotions and sensations. So there's two people holding their empowerment or empowerment, their centeredness. Yeah, still may not be comfortable, they still may be feeling all sorts of feelings of outrage or upset or distress, 
but they're now in ownership of those feelings and recognition of those feelings. Recognizing the presence of your internal states, your feeling, subjective states, is a way to hold them in a way where they can begin to find resolution because they're seen, acknowledged and held by you, by your I am presence. I feel sad, I feel grief, I feel frustrated. You've identified the feeling and your sense of I is holding it in your awareness, love and compassion. So this is a huge step in remaining harmonious internally. And what this enables is there's an energy now which is now available, a resource is available. Because if we go on the projection game, you know, you did this and you have cause of this and all these things, then we've lost our sense of center, empowerment, and we've actually dissipated our energy. If we're going to come to some agreement, resolution, harmony, mutual respect, or a difference of opinion and be okay with the difference, then we're going to need energy to enable this. So by holding my own internal state of empowerment, you holding your own internal state of empowerment, we both have a free energy now, which is not wasted in projection, attacking, humiliating and shaming, where we can actually utilize that energy to work towards a common goal of reharmonizing. Or simply being heard in the feelings that were present in you when such and such an action happened. Now if somebody says, you know, when you, you know, kicked me in the back, I felt da 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 and the expression is really clearly heard, then the hearing of the feeling is often enough to transform the activity of the other one to recognize, oh my goodness, I really hurt you. I thought it was a game we were playing and I crossed the line, a boundary, and I see that you got really hurt by that. Thank you for communicating and I apologize and I won't be doing that again or I'll check in again if we're going to play this game of wrestling to see where the agreed upon borders and boundaries are. So it's really important that you have this free energy between the two of you, yeah? self-ownership, capacity to describe the details of what happened. Yeah? And these three stages or three steps or three points of focus will really support you in conscious communication when things are difficult and comfortable equally when things are beautiful and wonderful it's still a great way of communicating so just to give a very quick summary one describe the details of what happened two take responsibility with i am beginning sentences for what you're feeling the emotion or the sensation three because you're not projecting and throwing your energy away, there's an available energy for a resource to transform the situation and you both work towards a common goal to see if you can meet each other's needs, meet your own needs, to see if you can find a common co-creative solution or simply to acknowledge your differences and relax into the differences of perception about what's happened and be comfortable in your unique original way of seeing something and the other person in their unique original way of seeing something which doesn't need any extra additional transformation just simply resting into what is seen and allowing it to be that way hopefully this is useful please give comments below if you want to ask questions make contact with me i'd be very interested to see how this uh, lands with you as a way of conscious communication to support us in those difficult times or when we're in troubled relationship with others, situations and circumstances. Thank you for listening.